Who of us as a kid did not want to become a train driver? Big, beautiful machines interest us from our youngest years and can turn an ordinary family trip to a neighboring town into one of the best moments of life. Not everyone manages to carry their love of the railway by the time they make a career choice. But what if I told you that there is a place on earth where being just a teenager you can already drive a real train? Welcome to Ukraine, a glorious land of opportunity with its unique children's railways. Alexei is only 16 years old, but he is already trusted to operate a full-fledged diesel locomotive pulling five passenger cars. He is supervised by his instructor, who, however, almost never has to intervene. This is the Kiev Children Railway, a 4-kilometer-long, 750-millimeter gauge railway line going around one of the city parks of the Ukrainian capital. Despite the name and short length, this is certainly not a toy railroad. It is equipped with all the features of a big railway, such as a semi-automatic block signaling system with 13 light signals and a radio communication system between trains, station, and track services. Rolling stock consists of TU-7A locomotives, a simple and reliable Soviet workhorse who served on the peat and timber narrow gauge railways all over the ex-USSR and also in Cuba and Vietnam. Kiev's Children Railway also boasts a 20-meter high, 100-meter long viaduct over a large ravine, a remarkable structure even for a grown-up railway. To tell the truth, it is a grown-up railway, except that all the jobs, from composing the trains to turning the switches, are performed by children as young as 10 years old. Children railways are a common thing for the post-Soviet countries. There are currently nine operating in Ukraine and 25 in Russia. The first one was created in 1935 when school children in Tbilisi, Georgia, came up with an idea of building a model railway big enough for a kid to fit into a cabin but ended up with a standard 750 millimeter gauge track and a 1911 German locomotive found on a scrapyard. Kids all over the USSR envied Georgian children, and in the very next year, a small Stalin railway was built in Nepropetrovsk, Ukraine. It was two kilometers long, ran around a pond in the city's park, and featured two sumptuous station buildings, two tunnels, and even had its own locomotive depot. It was equipped with the latest technology of the time. For example, shortwave radio communication. Newsreel especially emphasized that all operations on the small Stalin railway were performed with full compliance to the national railway rules and regulations. After almost 90 years, the children's railway of the city that is now called Dnipro continues to function in its original layout. Steam engines were replaced with 1950s Tu-2 diesel locomotives and the electric token system was superseded by relay semi-automatic blocking. But with strict adherence to the traditions, all the jobs, from selling tickets to dispatching the trains, are performed by children using the same instructions, regulations, and equipment as the big railway. Although they seem short and simple, Children's railways are not in any way a trivial operation of one train going in circles. Every trip, that usually lasts 20 to 30 minutes, passes among all the unpredictability of the real world. The Great Viaduct of Kiev's Children Railway is sometimes visited by people who like to play Russian roulette with their lives. The Children Railway of Moscow is located across the road from the residential neighborhoods and features several level crossings. Although every effort has been made to ensure that emergency situations only occur in theory classes, all the kids know what to do in case of a danger. They know it's not a toy railroad. Even so, there is some place for fun here. For example, when working out a situation of complete communication system shutdown, trackmen, in order to warn the driver that he is approaching a damaged track, put special warning firecrackers under the wheels of a train. What kid has not dreamed of doing that legally, huh?
and when the train finishes its trip, the time comes to perform maneuvers. The locomotive must be detached from the carriages, overtake them using the sidetrack, and then be reattached to the other side of the train in order to proceed in the reverse direction. The physically challenging work of coupling trains is performed by young women on an equal basis with young men. Мне бы очень хотелось в взрослой жизни быть машинистом, но не получится, потому что нельзя девушкам. Russia still maintains a list of more than 400 jobs that are prohibited for women. That includes dangerous chemical production, working in a mine, and driving a train. Nevertheless, on the children's railways, girls are driving the trains just as good as boys. Teachers praise them for being more attentive and less hectic. Thankfully, that unfair and discriminatory regulation lost its force on January 1, 2021. Elena, the first ever woman train driver in Russia, who put a lot of effort into repealing that law, started her career on Moscow's Children Railway. Летом практика это 5 километров протяженностью узкоколейная железная дорога, где все машинисты, проводники, кассиры, контролеры, дежурные по станции дети. Вот, да. И все под присмотром инструкторов взрослых. И я стояла дежурной по отправлению, которая с диском, в метро до сих пор такие остались. И тут как дождь ливанет, и машинист-инструктор выскакивает, говорит, прячься, прячься, и маленькая еще девочка с бантиками вот этими. Так. Я захожу, а там дизель стоит здоровенный, он да 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 вот это грохот стоит, приглушенный свет, эти генератор, там высоковольтная камера, это я как-то все это посмотрел, думаю, как классно. Kids are recruited to study on the children railways when they enter fifth grade. During the winter, they have theory classes. When the school year ends, in the summertime, they finally get the chance to try their newly acquired knowledge in practice. First-year students start with the most basic jobs, like station agents or ticket inspectors, and switch them, seeing how every piece of the complex railway mechanism works. As they grow up, they can choose specialties. Somebody discovers management aptitudes, others prefer analytical work in the control room, and of course, the most capable and lucky ones become a driver's assistant, and finally, a driver. Spending a summer at Children's Railway is a wonderful way to obtain soft skills and learn to work as a team. The Soviet government invested a lot of funds in the construction of pioneer railways, as they were called back then for a reason. These institutions, like no other, are able to teach a lesson in comradeship, one of the most important values of the communist ideology. Мы учим их быть ответственными. Они взрослеют здесь. Они приходят вот в пятом классе, они приходят детьми. Все, по окончании первого года практики они совсем другие. То есть они взрослые, они уже знают, что у них ответственно. Вы на них посмотрите, они стоят в форме, они уже ждут своих вот пассажиров, вот этих маленьких вот детей, которые дети придут. Они уже знают, что они уже не просто вот ребё... он ребенок, что он уже при исполнении своих должностных обязанностей. А дети придут уже к ним кататься. The very first children's railway was actually built in Gorky Park in Moscow a few years before the one in the Republic of Georgia, but history only mentions it very briefly. Rumor has it Joseph Stalin, a man of Georgian origin, was so fond of the idea that he ordered to erase all the recordings of the Gorky Park Railway, so his motherland also became a motherland of such an important institution. Children's railways were also built in other communist bloc countries. The most famous one and the longest in the world is located among the scenic hills of Budapest, Hungary. It connects to other public transportation services such as tram, cog railway and suburban buses, and is one of the city's major sites. Here, children are not allowed to drive the train. Europeans are rather strict in these matters. The country righteously condemns its communist past and got rid of all manifestations of the totalitarian regime long ago. But here, on the children's railway, time seems to stand still. The same as 60 years ago, Young children still wear their navy jackets and peaked military caps uniform. Teamwork and discipline are still the foundations of the railway work ethic, and no ideology can take it for itself.